Dorothy. How is everyone on this chilly winter day? We're very cold here. It's minus 17 Celsius. Hey, Dar. So I hope you're all doing well and the new year is treating you fine. So if you haven't uh, seen on the community page, there is a link for a traceable, and this is for everybody, public and everybody, members, Patreons, everyone. And hey, Lena. And you can download it, and it comes with a reference photo also, and it's from Unsplash. Uh, I forgot to bring the name of the guy of the... Um, but if you go on Unsplash and look up Fox, you'll find it there. As you say, oh, that's fine. Um, real, the real world <laughs> gets in the way sometimes, Devin. Well, thanks, Lena. So you can download that and the traceables with it, as uh, with the. Um, here it is here. It's a beautiful little fox, all snuggled in for the night. It's a cold night. I'll bring you guys right in. These are the types of fox that um, we typically have, the ones with the dark ears and the um, black socks. Lisa, Jilly, Dot, everybody. Awesome. Great to see you. So if you want to paint along, Carol, awesome. Carol, I haven't started. <laughs> I've been so busy, but I do want to do your stitching for the year. I'm bound and determined. <laughs> Everyone, um, the Magical Touch Studio does uh, Saturday stitch alongs. So check her out. Um, Janet, Janice, Lisa, good to see you. So this one kind of kind of got dirty, but that's what we're going to be doing. And on Thursday, I hope you'll all join in. We're going to be doing this, these cute little guys. They're all, I'm all about hibernating right now. <laughs> this is so darn cold. So these cute little raccoons all snuggled in the hollow of a tree, getting ready for winter. They, they, I don't know how they do it. They can get a whole family <laughs> in the smallest places. I can remember in my old place, they had I had um, a family living in my chimney, in the flue of my chimney. So a flue is like that big. I had to smoke them out because I didn't want fleas in the house and everything else. Plus they make a, a loud racket in the middle of the night. You hear them screeching and stuff. They are cute, but they can be very vicious. Vicious little dickens. And then, let's see, what else do I have here? Well, last week uh, we did a letter last Tuesday. And it was the letter J for January, and there's a traceable for the um, members. And if you just want traceables and no extra uh, videos and live streams, then you can just... Uh, Go on the artistic seedlings level in the membership or it's the same on Patreon. And the reason why I have Patreon too is because there's some people that can't get the, um, the link button and all the stuff from the um, membership on YouTube if they're using an Apple product. 
So I've got a Patreon too, or some people just prefer Patreon too. It is a little easier to navigate and find things on Patreon. And I wish they would do that on um, YouTube. So that was fun to do. And I've seen a few people um, list post it for me. And you guys are all doing fantastic. I'm so happy that you're painting along. It's not that difficult and you just take your time and enjoy what you're doing. Uh, yeah, they can be horrible. You can't let them... I know you kind of feel sorry for them, but nope. <laughs> can't let them do that. So we're going to do that, this on a double page spread. I already drew it in. And then this is that new book that I already showed. And it's a couple um, videos back on Tuesday, watercolor. And it folds flat. It's so nice. Um, and I see Janet M. Young got hers yesterday. And she... It's going to be swatching in it and loves it so far. Oh, great. Great, Carol. So we're going to do those. We're going to do a few animals, I think. Um, and then we did... I showed you how I did this cover on Thursday. So this, I still have to put something on here. But yeah, that was my... Um, 2020, 2020, um, yeah, 2020, half a year. So we did that, and we played with some ideas on this year's file folder. So this was one of the things that we kind of played around with, possibly that, or you could make it the accordion style, too. So just fold them like this. And we could start making an accordion. So just keep adding to it as you go if you want. Or make a whole large book up figuring out how many pages you need. You can always add pages to these. That's the great thing about this one. And then the last thing you do is make your cover. So that was on last Thursday's stream. Now I have been working on this month's membership for Patreon and YouTube. And the budding artists, there will be a painting. I think it's going to be mixed media. So we're going to probably use watercolor and colored pencil and ink. And this will be what we're doing. <laughs> Again, hibernation. He's, they're raiding the, <laughs> the, the birdhouses for the winter. That's where they go in the winter, is they go into the birdhouses, because there's already nesting material there, and they can snuggle in and hibernate. <laughs> but this one's full, and he's not letting this guy in. <laughs> so there can be battles in the land of sprites <laughs> and that's what's going on here so this will be for this month and that's budding artist and above and there'll be a video on how i do this <laughs> and then the blooming artist which is the highest level and they get all the levels below um, we'll be doing the accordion Constantina book for this year and we'll be um, throughout the year doing special pages in it and I'll be showing you the binding this this month. Thanks Lena. Yeah I know I gotta have naughty fairies. I gotta have a story. And, you know, <laughs> they got to be um, competing for things. It's not like here. They, they got to, it's like being in the 
wild. <laughs> All right, so I put these aside so I don't get any kind of stuff on them. Get my picture out. Now this one's going to be a, a fairly simple one. And what I want you to do, when you're looking at a photograph, a magazine, picture, whatever you want to start to draw or put watercolor to pencil, it doesn't matter what it is, the medium, the first thing you need to do is study the picture. So I am doing this in watercolor, so I know that I can do it with... Um, I'm sorry, gotta get rid of some of this stuff. Oh shoot, no. There, <laughs> almost lost you. Um, I know that watercolor is light to dark, so this one is mainly mm, three colors, maybe four colors in here. And when drawing, what I do is I look at it in a way of looking for objects or, or um, shapes, what, however you want to see things. So the it's kind of a square ball here. It's a little bit rounded. And then there's also a ball right here. And what you can do is when you draw, start drawing this and you don't have to do that you can use my traceables that's fine but if you want to venture into drawing the, some of these up too that would be great let me see if I can so no that's not one where's my drawing sketch uh, We'll just give it a little, little bit of a lesson here. I know some of you are interested in starting to draw some of this. I'm going to come out a little bit for you so you can see exactly what I'm doing. So when you're drawing this, we're just going to do the, the, the fox. So, and I'll make it smaller. So when you're drawing this, I'm looking, not looking at it as, as a fox, I'm looking at it as a shape. So it's, this is the highest point. So we just dip down, think of it as a, um, a shape. It rounds up here. I'm not even going to think of the ears yet. And then right in here there's a big shape here kind of a circle takes up probably even more almost three quarters of the and then halfway mark is about here so right about here you can put the ear in and it's kind of a triangle shape This is how I do most of my drawings. And then I think, okay, the th from here to here, the width of the ear is about the same width between the ears also. So you have to look at things in comparison to other things on the page. And if you can get that down, you're not going to have any problems. And then it goes down, it's a little bit longer. So it goes there. It's very fuzzy in the in the uh, inside of the ear, and then the eye is halfway. So there's about the halfway mark, and it lines up with this ear, and it's just about starts about right there, and the eye itself slopes down, and you can kind of just guess on it. It's got a very pretty eye. It's got almond shaped, but it does have a and 
looks like it's got kind of a diamond shaped pupil in it. And then the nose is about three quarters of the way down and it's snuggled into the fur, but it's not underneath this eye. So this here, it's almost in line with this ear, the edge. And just goes across. So like that. And then the muzzle just starts to go up there. He's very furry. And the only thing you have to worry about is the fur direction. And that will come with um, doing the painting when we do the uh, detail. You can put it in and if you notice he's curled up so his butt's right there and the direction of the fur, if you follow the back of him, the very center portion, you can see how it curves around and it follows that curve. And from that center point where his backbone would be, it just gradually um, sprays out to the side on both, both sides. It doesn't follow that all the way down. You have to keep in mind the direction of the fur. All right, and then you can have your grasses and whatnot. But so the uh, that's the line of his fur. So it comes out from here. His tail, very furry. And then as you go towards the top part of his leg, there it kind of goes to the side. And then it's, you see it up there, it's sticking up, kind of like a ball. And then there's fur up here. So you, and after you do a, a fast sketch like this, then you can go over top of it with um, tracing paper and put in the real lines that you want so you don't get mixed up. Or you can erase the lines if you're using pencil. But it's very, it's a great practice to do. And once you get comfortable with it, then there's no stopping you. You can do whatever you want. You don't have to wait for traceables or you can just do your own. Hey, Janet. So how's the, uh, <laughs> the new journal coming? Do you like the pages so far? Just gonna clean my palette, wet the pages, and get some paper towels. of this stuff out so it doesn't contaminate my colors that I use. So there's, um, I'm just going to put it, you guys are going to want to see my palette, right? There, just lining you up. Love that it's flat so far. I think I might be a new fave. Yeah, I, that's what I liked about it too. 
I, I do like the paper. We'll see what the, it does for this. <laughs> um, I'm going to do some wet on wet with this. And when I'm doing, I'm not worrying about individual hairs. All I'm looking at right now is the color uh, combinations that are in here. So I see a lot of this um, kind of a raw sienna. It's a little bit on the reddish side. Some um, darker burnt umber and some very pale almost titanium buff color. So I could put a little bit of um, raw sienna, a very pale, pale wash of raw sienna on there would probably work. And then uh, our blues, of course. Um, those look to be about, hmm, this is a little darker than what the, the photograph actually looks a little less blue. Um, I'm still playing with my printer. I haven't figured it out. I'm not very techy, as you know. <laughs> so let's mix some colors up here. Now we could do, let's see, what colors do we want? I guess a cobalt blue would be a good one for the sky. It's more on cobalt side than anything else. I'm going to want a fair amount of it. So I want it fairly... I'm going to put a fair amount of water and let it soak in there. Hey Zena! Gonna go with burnt sienna. It's a little more on the red side, and we can work with that. So this is a fairly thick consistency, and I can water it down to whatever I want. I want a fair amount of that blue though when we do the blue and then we're going to make up a black or some version of that and then I want a burnt umber too we'll just let that soak for a bit Zena, that's great. What a great friend. Oh, you're gonna love it. You're gonna love watercolor. There's so much you can do with it. It's easy to take with you. Um, you could also use a little bit of Payne's Gray, Windsor Newton Payne's Gray. Now, not all Payne's Gray are alike. Some are bluer. Some are a little on the green side, like the Daniel Smith one is a little bit on the greenish side, I find. But they all have their place. All right, so I'm going to get a bigger brush and wet my area. I don't want too big though. Let's see. Wet, wet the area with some clean water. Okay, so I'm going to put this up here. It's 
So I'm just going to start off with, and I'm not going to worry too much about going over the the um, body of the fox here and there. I don't want to go into it, but just on the outskirts. That way you can um, get in those areas where the fine hairs are going to be poking up on the edge of the fox. And vary the um, intensity. You could make a little bit of purple in there if you wanted to. Because it is basically the snow that he's sitting in. You're not seeing the sky. This is kind of the snow blurred out by the photography. So there would be areas that would have a little bit of shading, shadows, that type of thing. Go in one direction though I would. Like don't do S's or something. I would go in just one direction. Just makes it look a little bit more realistic as far as uh, layers of snow. There's a fair amount of water in the and this paper is really um, working out great. Just gonna put a little bit more on here. You'd have a little bit more just underneath them. So while it's still wet, you can add a little bit more of that color around them. You'll see how it's a little darker on the top, so you can take a little bit of um, either indigo or even purple would do. Let's try a little bit of um, dioxazine purple and mix it in with that blue. It'll change it up just slightly. You can put those up in the corners a little bit. Again, I'm just playing with it. See? Streaking in there. A little bit more. I'm just touching that dioxide. It's very powerful color. So you have to watch you don't get too crazy with it. Maybe a little bit in here. And then there's a an area where there's um, weeds or pieces of straw or what coming up. Okay. Okay, and now I'm going to dry it. I want to make sure it's really good and dry. And if you're using watercolor paper, you can do that.
Do you have a YouTube live? Vina? Thanks, guys. I'm glad you're learning. <laughs> it makes me happy. And if you don't like, you know, bumpy um, paper, you can actually iron your paper. If you want to get the lumps and bumps out, just put a piece of um, uh, parchment paper in between and uh, on top, and then you can iron it. It'll flatten. I love the, the sound of the paper once it's been wet. <laughs> All crunchy. Oh, thanks, Lena. Janet's busy with her new journal. <laughs> you get a lot of papers in it too. That's also the nice thing. It's not like 30 pages and you're done. There we go. Okay, and now we're going to put just a basic wash. We're not going for detail right now. We're just going to do areas of color. So we're looking at areas where we have the lightest colors. So around his, the bottom part of his tail or the top part of his tail here. And leave a little bit of white where his nose is his ears and his forehead we can do white because you got to remember anywhere where you're seeing a fair amount of light color those are the areas you want to do the lightest color in and then we'll paint over top of that sparingly with other um, colors with different types of brush strokes or even just uh, pen So his ears, even though his ears have black in there, we're just going to put a wash of very soft, soft. It's more or less a raw sienna color. Very, very, very washed out. So I have my raw sienna here. Do I? Yeah, this is raw sienna. And um, yeah, maybe a bit of yellow in there. I just dipped my brush in that yellow. It's just a bit. I just want to color the paper 
more or less. So I'm just doing the inside of his ears. Just above his um, eye has got a little bit of color in there. And on top of his forehead as a little bit. fairly watered down, you don't want it to. And then under his eye and down his tail, the top, well kind of the middle of his tail. Around his nose. And remember, remember your paints typically dry lighter. So if you find you, they're too light, you can always go back over top. It's easier to put on than take off. And there's quite a bit of light area right in here, so I'm just going to do a lot of light area there. And maybe a tad on the bottom here. There is some light. And a little bit on his, the top of his head, just a smidge. That's how I'm starting. Uh. <laughs> you know, you, you can't be too serious. I love it when people, you know, you got the um, confidence to go live is fantastic. And just do you. <laughs> that's how you learn. I think that's great. Okay, it goes a little bit up here. And then we want to add a little bit more of that sienna color, raw sienna, to our mix. I want to make it a little bit more on that orangey side. And quite a bit of his fur is this color. So I'm just going to go around his I want to leave that white spot around his mouth. And I'm not worried if it goes into the wet area that I've already painted with the light. So that will actually blend nice. So just do it while it's wet. Just along his ear here, tops of his ear. Now this isn't going to be like um, photorealism or anything. It's just an easy way of doing a record keeping of what a uh, fox you see or whatever. A little bit in his ear there. And down here. Now he's got quite a bit fur. I'm not. Go I'm going to kind of do an uneven edge. It's not really even. Let's see. Gotta make sure I got his. He's fairly darker on the back end. So I'm just going to put some of that in there.
If it's blotchy, don't worry about that because in a way they're, they're, the color is kind of blotchy on them. So it just adds to that fur texture. Now the real dark areas, you can add a little bit more of the color into your brush and do those. I'm just doing it while everything is still wet because I want it to bleed into the other colors. So it's fairly dark on the bottom here. Okay, and then a little bit of that umber color, that dark umber color. I'm going to water that down a little bit. And we'll add some of this on the bottom. Actually, I think I'll add a little bit thicker. And I'm just dropping it in. fairly dark in here along the bottom. And right in here. By his ear. It's, it's uh, kind of shadowed. Probably put a little bit in here where his hind leg kind of curls. And then just dab in, kind of stroke down the area where his backbone would be. a little bit darker and then I'm just going to take a clean brush and go over that soften it a little bit and I'm just going to go in this area here and wet this again so that this brown kind of seeps up and I don't have those hard lines. It's a little bit lighter but not a whole lot. See this paper is great because you can still um, clean up the hard edges which is awesome. It doesn't pill, which is good. Just it just helps when you soften those edges a little bit. Have a good day, Jilly. Okay, so let's try that again.
Am I close enough for you guys, or do you want me to come in a little bit? Okay, can you start? Just a tad? <laughs> okay. Crinkle, crinkle. Love it. All right. So, let's check this out. So, we could go up a little bit more in here. See that right there? It's a little darker. Actually, I think I'll wet it first. So it's a little more spreadable. I think that could go in more of the red. The sienna. Mm. Around the eye can be darkened more. So think of the shape of the the head. Just going around the edge to soften that. And just a little bit more. Doesn't take much. So just do, you know, little bits at a time. Got some dark areas in his between his ears here. Just dab on, let it do its thing.
and the edges before they get too hard. Some more of that burnt umber. So now we can follow basically. Let's see. I'm going to put some water down on an area and see. I want fairly soft. Um, there's some dark areas in the fur. But you have to look at it because it is going a certain way. But I don't want it too hard because most of the detail I think will be put in um, with some either colored pencils or pen work. So kind of your semi-dark color. I'm just going to add some of those. I'm going to mix a little bit of that Um, paints gray with that umber and that will darken it more. Let's get some more paints gray, a little bit of um, an umber. Just remember how your fur is going. Fairly, fairly dark. Especially on the bottom part here. It's pretty dark. Put quite a bit of that in there. Because if you don't have enough contrast, you'll notice your page kind of looks flat. So you got to remember to add enough contrast in. I'm just going over the, t the back end here with a little bit more of that darker mix. And just a few blotches up here where his hind quarter is. So you don't want it just to suddenly stop. He does have a few marks up there. And the real fine stuff you can do with um, pencils or pen. Okay, so this paint's gray with that umber color, the um, burnt umber, will give you a fairly dark, dark, almost black. And that's what basically you need. But you don't want it. I like using those combinations instead of just a, a regular black color from watercolor. I just find it looks nicer. Just gives it a nice um more of a natural color of what fur would be. So we can just do a little bit on his the ear here. Just 
a little thicker on the top part. Now I'm just going to take some clean water, kind of clean water, and in this, just in the um, ear part here, there's a dark section. So I'm just wetting that area past it a little bit. Let it soak in a little bit, and then I'm going to take that dark color again, and um, where the tufts of hair aren't, put, start putting that black, blackish color in along the edge here and let it um, blend into the other side. And that way you kind of get a, a fluffy edge to your color and it looks like fur. You can add a little more here and there, so it would be a little bit darker, if it's not dark enough. You can do his nose in the same color too, and actually you could do the same, because part of his nose is covered with fur, so to get that fuzzy look um, wet into that area a little bit, past the nose. And then where the fur is going over the nose, don't put the color there. Put it on the opposite side of the nose where it's more, there's a, an actual line that you'll see where the nose starts and finishes. And then just work your way up a little bit. I'm going to make some more up here. And it'll just gradually spider into that. a bit darker. We can also use um, pencil to make it darker. Now his eyes, um, I think I'll do his eyes with pen. He does have a black pupil. So I'm going to just put a little line in the where the pupil would be. It looks like it's almost the cat-like eye, actually. And I'm going to do the um, the iris in the sienna color. With a bit of yellow. I want a little bit on the yellowy side. And then I can go in with that and fix it as far as color with crayons and 
why not? There is a, a black ring around his eye, but I don't want to do it with the... I am going to darken around his eye a little more. Some umber. And just take my brush and wipe some of that away where I think there's too much like that so that's the nice thing about this paper you can actually do this other paper you can't that I was using um, maybe a little bit in here. A little more, maybe in here, around his mouth. So just You just keep adding color. That's why I like doing this, is you just add a little bit, bits at a time. We can always add gouache, like around his nose I might add some gouache. We'll see. See how it goes. Looks pretty good. Um, kind of they're almost the same color as these weeds here. They're kind of um, there are some mm, kind of umber color of some sort. Um, trick with this is you have to watch unless you want to use gouache, but you have to watch which way the uh, things are, are growing. So there are some that are broken. Um, they crisscross each other. Some are darker than others. Depends how much time you want to put into it. Um, they overlap, so you kind of have to do it's almost reverse negative painting. <laughs> Just trying to um, see what I can do here.
So there's some uh, really dark areas in there too. some of that. Uh, actually, I'm going to let that dry first. So let's dry it again. <laughs> Thanks, Peggy. <laughs> Just play. Play with it. See what you can do. Don't be hard on yourself. I've been doing this for a while, so if you're just learning, you might have to do it a few times. Alright, so in the back around here... We've got some really dark, faded out. It's not crisp looking. So the way you do that is you wet the area with clean water. Oh, we'll do the first one. And then you, that's kind of an indigo purpley color. So we'll get some indigo here. And a little bit of purple. And then you can just do some grasses. And it looks like they've been stripped and crumpled and there'll be more on the bottom. Let them fade out. Put some broken ones in. And then you could use that color or in here too. So I'm just going to put right on the bottom here some clean water. Maybe uh, look at the shadow, how it's shaped. And then use that same color that you had. And you can just dab around. And darken that inside there. gonna I don't want really hard lines on it and let that dry up a bit we'll come back to that all right let's see what else can we do to this guy maybe a little bit more right here and right here more in the reds. Just keep adding till you like it. We'll be putting pen on, so and that'll make a big difference once we put the pen work on. Take a smaller brush. Let's see. Mm. 
see how the um, right in here there's white or cream colored going over top of his nose so what you can do is take some of that color from his nose on a brush the fine liner and just brush it into that area you just have to mind the size just slight very very um, lightly hold your brush Here almost. Then I just take my brush in this part, soften those lines. So I'm more interested in the The lines where the light part is. color in there. See what I done. All right, so let's dry that, and then I think I'm gonna put a little bit of pen work in right now. Thanks, Lena. Hey, Joan. I do it because I love doing it, and that is... That's right, Kathleen. It's all about the process. Okay, I'm going to do his eyes. So I have some different inks here, but I'm going to use a black for his, around his, um, let's see what we got here. Let's try this one. 
I like water um, proof pens, so Microns. These are um, uni pens. They're also permanent. This is a uh, point three. Pay attention to the shape of the eye. Does have a dark tear duct, and it's a little bit thicker in there. And there, and then his. I'm just going to fill it in. I'll just use some gouache or some kind of a marker. His nose. Maybe a little bit darker on the bottom. He wouldn't get the shine off his nose. And I just speckle a little bit in the center. And then he does have a few little whiskers. I could put those in with... I'm just going to put some dots in where the whiskers would be. And then I'm going to outline his ears. Let's see if it went through. Nope. Just checking. So I'm just doing little sketchy marks on an angle. And then the same going upwards on an angle. This side. If you want to learn more about um, this type of drawing, I can recommend um, what's her name? Oh, what's what's the author we love, Janet? Um, can't think of it now. <laughs> oh man, my brain's not working. Um, is it Claudia Nice? Books? Our niece? I think it's nice. If I'm correct. Yeah, that's it, Michelle. Thanks. She has excellent books on pen work. I may take some more um, very, well, I could leave it like that, but hmm. it does have a few marks. I'm going to get a smaller pen. This is a number three. I think I want a one. Some really nice thin marks. Yeah. And 
and he has a few marks on his forehead. And just put a few, you know, actually they're just a few here and there. Could have had it really smaller actually. And I'm gonna put a few of his whiskers in. They're not very big. Um, and now, if you look at the side, see how the hairs are all coming out? You can do that too. So just go over the areas and just with a really light hand, don't make them too long. And you can cross them a little bit. Not a lot though, like not an extreme cross. And just go around that edge where they're dark with this color. And go into, just keep in mind um, your pattern and direction that your fur is going in. Because if you don't, it's not going to look right. Thanks, Dot. Uh, Claudia Anise has a great book on pen work for fur and animals, trees, nature, all kinds of stuff. So just keeping, remember that it's more concentrated on the edges, it'll seem. This part is what takes the longest, I find. But I enjoy this this um, part of the journey. And then I'm going to use a um, maybe a white pen. If I, um, we'll see how it looks. Might be too thick. I tried finding my nibs. Can't find them. Don't know where I put them. Um, where else? Some out here. We can mix them with um, browns too if you have a sepia color. That would look cool. Just keep in mind how they're Laying. I think that's the biggest um, thing I can suggest. And then the dark areas, I'm just going to put some smaller hairs, not covering it completely, but just in those small areas to darken those areas a little bit. And I'm still keeping in mind how the fur is going.
just keep putting in as much as or as or if you like it without pen work that's fine too do you do what he, I love detail so that's why I like putting all this stuff in <laughs> some people can live without much detail some people like a mix that's something you'll learn when you start doing more you'll find your go-to but you have to do it in order to find it he does have a lot of fur like this dark stuff it gets shorter as you go up and then it kind of turns and goes upward but you have to really study how it's laying Especially around his so I'm still putting I'm not just putting it in one area but I have some areas that are more concentrated than others because I'm going to add um, probably sepia also to this but I did want some darker areas because there are, you will see those more concentrated along the back So this is a good one if you're learning, wanting to learn fur. This will help you um, study how it lays, which direction it's going, um, how it changes color, the mixing. So don't shy away from it. This is how you learn. Got any questions? I'm gonna look up for a minute here. I know I haven't been paying much attention to chat, so if you got a question, now's the time. I'm talking about food <laughs> or go to. Then in the ear here, I think I'm going to put, I think I need it darker in here, but I'm going to use, use some paint in there, I think. Same with here. It needs to be a little darker. Uh, this needs to come down a little bit. It does have some hairs in there. Uh, 
Thanks. Oh, thanks, Michelle. Now because this is um, waterproof ink or ink, I can still go back on this with um, watercolors and it's not going to hurt it, which is awesome. Let's see, I think right in here by his ear still has to be a darker, I think. have to bring his ear down a little bit more too. So I'm gonna do more of a darker color. This is the burnt umber and a little bit of dark mix with it, just to darken it a little bit more. And Right along here, there's like a little line. What I can do is take a fine pen and scrape into, make some finer lines with your pen nib or piece of whatever you got. Soften that a little bit. Is up too high. I'm just doing this nose a little bit. And maybe some of this in here. Make it a little more fuzzier.
All right, so now we can take, let's see, a brown. Let's see if this is going to be too... Oh, there it is. Let's see. This is the number three. Some sepias are different colors. So, okay, that's a nice color. You kind of have to test them. So this one's um, a little more reddish. might just get out my colored pencils too. Yeah, I think I will. I don't have all the colors for pens, so. And I don't think I have a brush small enough. Well, I could actually, let's see. I might take a chance. <laughs> I have the clear brush. Their nibs are fairly short. Let's see if we can find a good color to use. Okay, let's see. We will test. See what we can do. Mm. Well, not bad actually. It's a little bit on the that's dark. That's not bad. Let's see. No, I think I like colored pencils. I have more control. Let's see. I want kind of an orangey russet color. Yeah, that might do. It's kind of a, a little more on the orange side, but I think it needed that. I don't mind the dark pen work in it, but it's hard to get little little dabs going into the lighter sections. So why not use colored pencils?
I can use um, beige and I believe in using what you have. Whatever makes it easier. <laughs> I guess that's why I mix media. Um, you look so real. Well, thanks. Okay, it doesn't show much there, but it does show really good here for what I want. I just want a little bit of texture, but not in your face. You know what I mean? I'm going to have to keep it fairly sharp. But he does have just a little bit more of an orangey effect here and there. Like I said, if you wanted just to do the watercolor part, then that's all you need to do. I'm crazy about detail. Um, I like seeing hairs and stuff like that in my work. So that's why I go for that type of thing. You don't have to do that though. It would have been fine just as watercolor. Just how I roll. <laughs> you taking the dogs out, Carol? Uh, so cold. They don't stay out long. Oh, you got huskies, though. So they're, they're ready for the cold. They probably love it out there. Mine, not so much. They've got frozen little feet. See his eye should be here, so I got I gotta make this a little different. How do I think I could put another eye in? That's no problem. <laughs> uh white. Let's see. Well, here's a cream color. Let's see what we can do. Nope, not enough. Let's do some Posca. Again, across his ear. Across his nose. Yeah. 
and you can fix things. Then we can do a little in here. Going into the fur. Up into here a little bit. Just lightly. And I'm very, very light handed. I'm really concentrating on the way the hairs are going. How many is it more concentrated in cream or ears? We could do that too. Eyebrows. A little bit in here, just small ones. I'm just going to go back and now I might not have to because this Posca sometimes takes the um, color of whatever's it's being put on. And that works to my advantage. Uh, and I can put a few through here. Pay attention to your the shapes and the direction, that's all. And is it more concentrated? Like it's a little bit more concentrated up here. Goes down into the hip. don't see any in here, but I do see on the back. They don't have to be real long or anything, but just keep an eye on where they're all going. They get shorter as it goes up the back. Now I know they're not white. I'm gonna, once this is dry, if they're too white, I'll just put a wash of um, sienna on to color it. There's a little few more on the bottom here probably reflection reflection from the snow
in here. On the top part here. Haunch for the a leg. And let's see. Just going to put a few more concentrated as it turns around the body from your perspective. They get a little bit more concentrated because you're looking at it in a side view. It's not necessarily because there is more, it's just you're looking at it sideways so it looks like it's more concentrated. Just keep in mind the direction again. And a few more up here. Slightly. All right. Oh, I'm going to put that line right there. And And a few out here. here. Alright, so I'm going to dry that and then I'm going to put a little bit of a wash on. wash of uh, sienna over top. So more or less on the back here. Mm. Darker on the So it just takes that bright, bright white off a bit when you do that. Try it.
great. And then just a few more little colored pencil thingies along the edge here on the top. And this will be more in the, this is goldenrod color. And maybe a little in there. Like that. Comes out a little bit. some of this so we know it's um A little more pencil work or pen work, maybe on there. Maybe some brown. Let's see. Yeah, maybe. Just a bit. Looking at this, I think it needs some definition in there, some brown maybe. Let's see what this color. Oh, this might work. That red. Where is Just to show where his um, leg is, how it turns, he needs to have a little bit more defining in here. needs to be a darker in there
little bit of shading. darker in the, where the little bits of um, fluff in the ear just to outline some of those to define them a little more that's better take much. Sometimes it's just a little little smidge here and there. I know I'm this isn't um, all watercolor. <laughs> I just can't help it. Can't help myself. Okay. Um his eye is a little bit darker color. So I'm going to put a little bit, oh, let's try this color, maybe this will work. No, nope. it needs to be darker. A little bit of um, darker on the one side. Kind of a hat. And let's do some of the this part. Show sure, we could get a white out. Um, actually, well, let's see if it works. So it does cross over. I don't really notice it on here, but there are sections. Where I can use this brown. Just make some dark areas, light areas. Just, just kind of, it's a complex um, little bit here, but if you can just play with it a bit, so it kind of resembles sticks. this one. It's almost the same. It's a color soft. Let's try this one. Oh, that's not bad.
could almost go in the blues too. I might put some blue oh whites in yet too. Yeah. That one I don't have to worry too much about. Um, some white. Or let's try this. Nope, I'll take it off. Let's pop it. See if we can get some of these whites in. There's some leaves in there too, but I'm not going to get that detailed. <laughs> I could, but I'm not going to. Uh, let's put a few more. Bit of watercolor here. That purpley blue color. So I want to put some more in here. And then some more blue and do the there's some really really blue areas in here so with a fine brush I just want these areas a little bit more saturated actually I can just go over these would be fine too more blue in this area just in a few of these just to darken them some of them more along the bottom than anywhere else to do that then you gotta <laughs> do all the other areas that are darker like in here and on the bottom that's too small a brush This is more of the, um, what is it, cobalt? Yeah, cobalt blue.
All right. Let me look. Could do a few white patches now on his nose. Just a few across here. son's making me dinner. He's a good cook. back is a little low but oh well <laughs> I lost my the look um, just looking at the monitor sometimes when you look in your monitor you can spot things that you can't see face up so like this here if I can erase that a little bit take some of that color out move it I think that's pretty good. fiddle. Stop fiddling as I go for more. All right. That's it. There you go. He's hiding. Poor little fox. He's so cold. <laughs> yeah, I think it look it looks pretty good. I'm happy with it. So let's Put my John Henry on there. Today is A little cold fox. I like his eye. The leg's a little wonky, but not bad. I lost the uh, sketch. That's he should have more fur up here. I could probably do that, but eh, I'll leave it. <laughs> Thanks, Michelle. Oh, I love you to do it. Janet, everybody, just give it a try. Even if you're just doing it to figure out fur. Um, if you want, I can bring out next week the book from Claudine Nice. And she has a page on fur. It's very interesting. Um, thanks, Dot. Beef Wellington. Is that what you're having, Lena? Lemon stuffed oven roasted chicken with parsley. Just delicious. Turned the whole kitchen into a wonderful... Oh, I bet. That's what you had? Yeah. 
Thanks, Joan. Yeah, that sounds good. I love that lemon. I had a friend that was Greek and she used to make the lemon chicken soup <gasps> to die for. It was so good. It was a Greek recipe. Favorite food, oh. <laughs> Thanks, Kathleen. Oh, you're welcome. I'm glad you enjoyed. So, uh, you know, download it. It's for everybody. The printable and the um, reference photo. You don't have to do it in watercolor. Do it in whatever you want. You could even do a collage. Do whatever. Make an abstract. I don't care. Just create. That's all I want you to do. Have fun. Create. Get away from the world for a little while and enjoy yourself. So that's it for today and next, uh, this coming um, Thursday, we'll be doing these little guys. <laughs> and uh, maybe, maybe get into some texture with that texture paste or something to make the bark on the tree. That might be fun. All right, I'll let you guys go and have a fantastic evening, and we'll see you later. Bye for now.